Over the past decade, the Mangroves for the Future initiative has stood at the forefront of sustainable coastal resource management in Asia. Through a partnership-based, people-focused and policy-relevant approach, MFF has brought together over 300 partners in 11 countries across Asia to strengthen the resilience of ecosystem-dependent coastal communities. Following the devastating impacts of the Indian Ocean tsunami in 2004, there was wide recognition of the critical need to improve management of coastal areas and the vital link between healthy ecosystems and the livelihoods of coastal communities. In this context, Mangroves for the Future was established in 2006 and launched by President Bill Clinton in Phuket, Thailand. With financial support from Sweden, Norway and others, and co-chaired by IUCN and UNDP, the initiative first focused on six countries most affected by the tsunami. In its early years, MFF aligned with the Hyogo Framework and Millennium Development Goals. It adopted a Build Back Better approach and promoted investment in coastal ecosystems as a form of natural infrastructure to protect coastlines and the people who live along them. This not only helped support the rehabilitation of mangrove ecosystems, but also helped improve the livelihoods of coastal communities and reduce the risk of future natural disasters. As MFF matured, five additional countries joined the initiative. Responding to multilateral environment agreements such as the Convention on Biological Diversity, MFF expanded its scope to meet emerging needs and priorities across the region. This included climate change, bright space approaches, and the engagement of civil society in decision-making processes. With additional support from Denmark, MFF developed a more active focus on the integration of ecosystem-based adaptation approaches, gender equality, and co-management arrangements to support sustainable coastal resource management. In recent years, MFF has continued to evolve using its well-established national and regional governance platforms to build resilience among communities, institutions and ecological systems to adapt and recover in the face of change. This guides MFF's strategic planning and investments that aim to generate and share knowledge, empower stakeholders and enhance coastal governance. It contributes to achieving the sustainable development goals including conserving marine and coastal resources, taking action to address climate change and promoting sustainable economic growth. Engaging the private sector has also been a priority for MFF as it underpins current and future economic activities such as commercial fisheries, aquaculture and coastal tourism. Today, MFF has supported more than 340 projects across Asia. In the last four years alone, the program has benefited more than 330,000 people in its target areas. Moving forward, MFF will continue to collaborate with national, regional and international partners and apply its soft governance platforms for efficient project implementation, knowledge sharing and policy influence in support of sustainable management of our coastal resources. In a small village near Swan Tui National Park in Vietnam, women take advantage of the early morning low tide to gather clams, snails, and crabs for food for their families and for selling. Most of the women in the village cannot get a job away from their village and must stay at home to look after their children and livestock. Going to the mud flats, which is part of a protected area, is one of the few options women in the village have to help secure food and extra household income. Cô thích công việc này bởi vì nàng làm nó tự do, làm nhiều ăn nhiều mà làm ít ăn ít nó không có ràng buộc của ai hết. Đi cứ độ 4 5 giờ sáng đi đến 12 giờ hay 1 2 giờ về đấy là quyền của các cô. Không có người quản lý. Đấy là quyền dân chủ của mình nên là thích. 
Gathering clams, snails, and crabs has given women important insights about the area and the surrounding mangroves, which will prove invaluable in securing a future for their children and for their community. Ở Xuân Thủy chúng tôi thì có rất nhiều năm truyền thống hợp tác với hội phụ nữ để thực hiện các cái dự án về phát triển cộng đồng. Và chính vì vậy khi tiếp cận với dự án MFF thì chúng tôi cũng lựa chọn hội phụ nữ là nòng cốt trong cái việc mà triển khai dự án về khai thác và sử dụng bền vững tài nguyên thủy sản ở dưới tăng rừng do MFF tài trợ. Since 2013, MFF supported an initiative to strengthen park management by engaging local women in co-management of the mangrove forests, enlisting active community participation in caring for important ecological areas is one of the more effective strategies in protected area management. With the participation of the women, healthy mangrove forests are translating to better resilience for coastal communities. Nhưng họ cũng đóng một vai trò rất là quan trọng bởi vì chính họ là những người trực tiếp sử dụng cái tài nguyên ở vườn. Công việc mà liên quan đến cái hoạt động ở vườn quốc gia thì người phụ nữ luôn luôn có ý kiến và tôi nghĩ rằng cái vai trò của người phụ nữ càng được tôn trọng bởi vì họ gắn bó và họ thậm chí họ sinh tồn ấy. Nó, nó giống như là cái nghiệp của họ ở trong rừng ngập mặn. Rất nhiều người họ kiếm sống ở rừng ngập mặn và họ có được cái cuộc sống tốt hơn từ rừng. This story of Swan Tui National Park reminds us how critical gender equality is to sustainable development, empowering women by giving them equal participation in the use, access, and decision-making related to nature's resources is critical for the prosperity and health of our society and of our planet. Đối với này, um, hội phụ nữ cũng như là cán bộ viên hội phụ nữ xã của chúng tôi với vai trò của vườn thì chúng tôi luôn luôn là đặt hàng đầu là bảo vệ môi cái môi trường cũng như là cái bảo vệ vườn quốc gia chính là cái nơi mà chúng tôi đã được hưởng lợi từ từ vườn cái nghiệp của cô là cứ phải theo biển thôi <cười>
the output, we have uh, ICM training manuals and ICM course manuals. We are using ICM course manuals in the undergraduate program. They also use some chapter of the manual at the master program in climate change and master program in biodiversity conservation. To ensure that teaching staff in these institutions are comfortable in delivering the components of the ICM course, MFF developed a training of trainers program that supports the development of national ICM course curriculum and enhances the capacity of trainers to teach the core content of the course. The trainer and training course or the ICM course is uh, very effective for us and uh, it can help our university curriculum and syllabus. ICM TLT course was quite beyond what I expected, it's beyond expectation. Primary school students are at the forefront of their communities, learning how to turn their ways into gold. With MFF support, families in Myroot can sell their recyclables to a small enterprise called Wong Panit, which will then sell it to larger recycling companies. Waste can be a source of income for these families, but they first have to sort it into its different categories. ประเภทของขยะเช่นstudents are also taught that recycling should be a last resort these students learn that they should first reduce reuse rethink reject repair and return what they can <laughs> As a majority of the population in the area depends on mangrove wetlands for fishing and agriculture, students learn how critical it is that these areas are sustainably managed and not taken over by waste. Mangroves for the Future has started long before the adoption of the Sustainable Development Goals uh, by the global community in September 2015. It is noteworthy that uh, MFF actually contributes to and is aligned with all the 17 SDGs. MFF's focus on uh, healthy and resilient ecosystems alleviates uh, poverty and improves resilience and the overall welfare of coastal communities in 11 countries in Asia. Of particular relevance to MFF are 
Goal 1 on poverty, Goal 14 on oceans, Goal 13 on climate action, Goal 5 on gender, and increasingly Goal 17 on global partnerships. All of these are relevant to MFF's current work and long-term goals. Indonesia is home to the world's largest mangrove population, housing 22.6% of all mangroves on Earth. Dengan tumbuhnya mangrove-mangrove di daerah Laut Cilik, yang nantinya bisa menjadi tempat persinggahan para burung-burung, dan di bawahnya itu ada ekosistem laut yang memudahkan nanti para nelayan untuk mencari nafkah di sana. The enormous economic value of mangrove timber has led to massive exploitation, especially on the four largest islands, Sumatra, Java, Kalimantan, and Sulawesi. Between 1980 and 2000, it is estimated that 1 to 1.7 million hectares of mangroves were lost. Approximately 25% of this was cleared for fish pond aquaculture, or tambak, and 75% was converted for agriculture or degraded by overexploitation and coastal erosion. Kalau mangrovenya itu jadi, itu kan mengurangi angin pada saat musim penghujan datang, angin barat itu kan dengan banyaknya mangrove bisa kita apa antisipasi dari ombak-ombak karena kita itu kan garis besarnya desa Cangkring itu ya berhubungan dengan laut langsung gitu. Mangroves for the Future in Indonesia is supporting local communities to restore and manage coastal ecosystems. The program aims to raise awareness of the importance of mangroves for storm protection, fishery support, climate change adaptation and mitigation, and also of their cultural significance to local communities. In the north coast of Java Island, MFF focused its efforts on three districts of two provinces, Indramayu in West Java and Provolingo and Situbondo in East Java. In Indramayu, MFF partners conducted coastal restoration through planting mangroves. Dan sekarang tahap pertama sudah dilakukan pola polikultur, persemean, dan juga silvofisheri. Jadi silvofisheri bagaimana tambak di tengah-tengahnya ada mangrove. Jadi bagaimana pola-pola untuk meningkatkan pendapatan petani tambak, intinya seperti itu. Sekarang tahap kedua, bagaimana meningkatkan pemberdayaan perempuan yang tadi pagi kita melakukan pelatihan, sehingga ibu-ibu juga mendapat apa ada pendapatan di sana. Nah kita itu tetap binaan kita dan bagaimana keseriusan mereka untuk melakukan usaha bandeng tanpa duri. Dan mungkin kedua juga persemaian tahap ini arahnya ke pemberdayaan ibu-ibu, kelompok perempuan juga dengan persemaian lanjutannya karena persemaian itu baru kita laksanakan 60 persen dari 40 ribu, eh, dari 50 ribu tanaman baru tersemai 30 ribu jadi tahap kedua 20 ribu lagi dengan jenis yang berbeda. By demonstrating the high economic and social returns from investing in coastal ecosystems. MFF Indonesia's partners are expecting the initiative to evolve with a particular focus on public and private sector partnerships. On October 29, 1999, Super Cyclone B3 struck coastal Odisha in India claiming 10,000 lives and destroying 47 villages. Pampa Dolui was 15 years old at the time. She lives in Udayan village near Odisha's Bitarkanika Ramsar site and has spent much of her life at the mercy of extreme natural forces like the super cyclone and man-made disasters. In Odisha, hectares of rich agricultural land and mangrove forest are being replaced by prawn farms Salt water leaches from these ponds into the surrounding fields, killing crops. With no alternative, farmers must either turn to fishing or rent their lands for further aquaculture, perpetuating the unsustainable cycle. In 2016, with the support of Mangroves for the Future, 
A local NGO called the South Asian Forum for Environment, or SAFE, intervened by providing sustainable livelihood alternatives to coastal communities. These include special types of aquaculture called pen and cage and crab fattening techniques. Cage and pen ponds hold organisms captive whilst maintaining a free exchange of water which reduces the amount of salt leaching into the soil. Crab fattening helps farmers earn more for each crab they sell. Pampa was the first to offer her pawn to the SAFE team to demonstrate pen and cage culture and is now the face of the community. She and many of the women from her neighborhood are leading the change. SAFE has since reached out to eight villages and more than 4,000 households in the area. Together, SAFE and the villages continue to work towards long-term sustainability in Bitter Karnaka. Gafdal Faris Matada, Hinghama Jehomaya Rashuga of the Kuning, Rakatir Mahole Libifawa Rashe. Rasha Femberga Kunimanejo again Dumi, Mirge Kome Rajite gave his take and Benu Vituhe. Egota Mifuria Machinery Zai Kuri, Waste Management Center, Amali Maseke Feshigan DA, MFF, Mangroves for the Future Program, Red Productioning, the Has Panarvana Aharo Hingunu, Project Getasho. Waste Management Center Huluagan. Reduce, <laughs> Come Gekun, Kuninaga, Sulu, Ratuga, Huna, Borda, the Am, Sarahat, Kumas, Kuninagang, Raitun demand. Unido got to a Bernon Kura, Taketi, Bernon Kogge, it me Kunin Atadum of Bernova, Taketi, Ijadoku. Near Salgon, Vistum, Mihar, Horikame, Tamihar by Taketi Alon, Mikol, Ijadoku, Masaka, Korea, Mihar, Stani. Alon, Mihar, me, Inga, Modelka, Vene, Kuni, and the Atta Bernon Kogge. Kuni endum eco fructaduma, algorum, masaka take, pura, purimauga, algorum, decem bernua, emmebono, egg amas. Then egg eturang algorum, hama, ebajehe, rayetuna, hasa, campene, hinga, mojitama, algorum, me bernum pura, dalu fully, madapuruma. Pisalaka, dualaka, algorum, and evadipe, gagandaka, pet bottle, badanya. The government if any other Ganoni, Zaman Suren, Kuni Alamundi, Chakabime, Mihar Paka can hit the Pawata. Me Nizam, the Mehetan Vigotaka Korea Gendium, a hitter campaign on V. Aki Dive Sarukarum, Sadi Dive Raji Raito, and Kamodua, I come up at the first budget, Kuniko Hinga, Rattaka, Ederic and Denama, Asumihar, Mihinga, Kuniko, Miavur, Hardonako, Rangaloko, Hingam Danakam or Murgir. Mid Faris Matura, Kumbe Rajita Kivis, Ufe de Kunyamid, Hail of Terry Fava Rajit. One of the achievements of MFF has been to create institutions for environmental governance through its national coordinating bodies, through its regional steering committee, and essentially these, these bodies have managed to bring together a diverse mix of players across the entire spectrum of stakeholders that look after coastal resources and allowed them to coordinate, allowed them to be empowered in terms of raising resources, in terms of identifying and addressing the issues that threaten coastal ecosystems and their long-term sustainability in the context of the Sustainable Development Goals 
and in terms of the national plans, coastal management plans of countries. So these particular institutions that now have were started and have now grown and matured over the last 10 years of the MFF program are institutions where a level of stewardship takes place and oversight and management of coastal resources takes place that gives one a sense of optimism in terms of the coastal management and the resource base in the countries in which Mangroves for the Future uh, operates and which participate in the program. Oceans are the repository of a very unique biodiversity and they are the repository of life itself. MFF supports a holistic and integrated approach for coastal governance. In the past two years, MFF has helped Pakistan to establish its first MPA and Cambodia to establish their first marine national park. <laughs> A marine protected area is a geographical space recognized, dedicated and managed to achieve the long-term conservation of nature with associated ecosystem services for those whose livelihoods depend on the ocean. In Pakistan, we have recently declared a solar and the ocean around it as, as the marine protected area. That's a very unique area. It's got a very rich biodiversity, underwater life, and we're trying to protect it. So we are trying to create the management plans to make sure that we take it as a very precious resource for Pakistan and we can use it as a model for creating other protected areas. The IUCN World Conservation Congress 2016 endorsed a resolution for the establishment of Astola Island as a marine protected area in Pakistan. MFF coordinated scientific assessments of Astola Island and engaged national to local stakeholders in discussions about the management of the MPA. In June, Astola Island was officially declared an MPA. The protected areas provide the opportunity to safeguard the marine protected areas from uh, the bad effects of pollution and other human activities. Khot Rong Island in Cambodia is rich in coastal habitats and home to endangered species such as the Irrawaddy dolphin and the dugong. To support the Cambodia Ministry of Environment and the Fisheries Administration in establishing the Khot Rong Marine National Park, MFF made arrangements for Cambodia government officials to visit the Ku Lao Cham National Marine Park in Vietnam in 2016 to learn best practices for effective MPA management. In February 2018, the Marine National Park was declared following a series of dialogues with local fishing communities, tourism operators, and other island stakeholders. Before we set up those uh, areas as the national park, uh, mostly the people living there depend on the fishing and normally have some illegal activity like the dynamic fishing, trawling net, uh, one of the key uh, issues that impact to the established uh, Korong National Park. គឺវាល្អសម្រាប់ប្រជាពលរដ្ឋឲ្យរស់នៅជុំវិញកោះរងកោះរងសំឡឹមនេះគឺវាល្អសម្រាប់បង្កើតធុនធានធម្មជាត
Although this important ecosystem provides many integral goods and services to the local communities, it has been degraded over the last decade by human activities like the expansion of settlements and unsustainable fishing practices. In a bid to help reduce fishing and other ecosystem pressures, an aloe vera cultivation project was introduced to the women of the local fisher communities. The project succeeded well beyond its expectations, with some surprising results. For Shanta and his wife Delini, bringing up three children on a fisher's wage is no easy task, especially when there has been a noticeable decrease in the yearly catch from the lagoon due to overfishing. Beaver Rasa Vinkian, Ekamatama, I think a Pirasa with the Gatamakaran, eh, Unatikin, Maluha, Venevela, Lutinama, Samara Keller, Natsatam, and then made our solar, then Pogima, Sima, Huna, Kapuima, Huna, then a win in a Dangoda Kadu. Mohammed Nusri of Sri Lanka's Marine and Coastal Resources Conservation Foundation devised the Aloe Vera project to help supplement local incomes. particular aloe vera project we introduced for fisher women as an alternative income earning activity. Because the poverty is the main reason for resource depletion. So uh, therefore we introduced uh, this for an income earning activity. Aloe vera is a multi-purpose plant used in soaps, body lotions and skin care products and thrives under the dry, sandy soil conditions surrounding Putalam Lagoon. Recently, the demand for aloe vera products has increased both locally and internationally. Eventually, 30 fisher families in all participated in the program. The plants are harvested four times during the growing season, from June to October, with each harvest having a guaranteed sale to the Janet Cosmetic Group, based in Colombo. The Janet Group is an organization that has been in the personal care industry in Sri Lanka for the past 50 years. And once the aloe vera is arrived, it's actually hand processed and it's hand cut and then the gel is extracted. Because we need to keep the gel, we, we extract the gel, we packet it and freeze it. Where aloe vera is a very critical um, ingredient in most Ayurveda preparations. So it's actually a win-win situation because we are getting a good organic aloe vera harvest as well as we have managed to I mean, consider it as a community trade project, uh, give a, a livelihood to these uh, farmer families as well. For the fisher folk of Putalam Lagoon, growing aloe vera has proved remarkably successful. Across the board, monthly incomes have increased by more than 20%. The environment is benefiting too. Biodiversity is conserved as aloe vera is no longer harvested from the wild and there is less fishing pressure on the lagoon as the men are spending less time fishing and more time helping their wives tend their gardens. Near the Sundarbans in Bangladesh, Promilarani weaves mat using a grass-like wetlands plant called reed. These mats are then sold through a community enterprise established by Promila and other women from the community. আগে আমরা মাঠে জনমজুরি দিয়ে সংসার চালাইতাম তাতে করে আমাদের সংসারটা ভালো রকম চলতো না। Before having the reed mat business, Promila and her friends collected shrimp post larvae and fish larvae from the nearby Kolpotua River for their livelihoods. This put pressure on ecosystems and accelerated the rate of depletion of Sundarban resources. With the reed mat business, Promila and over 100 other women in her community no longer have to rely on collecting shrimp and fish, hence reducing pressure on the river. The mad business was made possible with the support of the MFF Small Grants Facility that enabled local NGO Nobolok Podishod to help local women like Promila establish community enterprises that provide alternative and sustainable livelihoods.
Pramila and her friends were able to start a cooperative of selling mats made out of local reeds. Mat prices ranges from US dollar 1 to 7 per piece depending on size. Besides playing a role in addressing climate change, the mat business has also brought about social benefits. The women now have a newfound confidence that enables them to negotiate prices directly with the customers while maintaining fruitful working relations with shopkeepers. As a result of the financial leadership training provided as part of the project, Promila and her colleagues now feel empowered to negotiate prices and take orders directly from customers. Using reeds from a one hectare plot, they sold US dollar 3,500 worth of mats in 2015. Today, Promila's cooperative continues to show signs of improved market access as the women have built and maintained good working relations with local shopkeepers. The enterprise continues to save every week and has appointed an accountant to help manage finances. Members are also eligible to take loans from the group for individual ventures. As the cooperative network grows and Promila becomes more equipped with expertise and experience, she feels that there is certainly hope for the future. Amra Gware Shop Kisu